Hey you guys, this is Josh and Carolyn with Homesteading Family and welcome to this week's episode of the Pantry Chat, Food for Thought. Yeah? Do you know what episode it is? 19? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Somewhere around 19. It's been fun. It, ha it has the pantry been fun. Chat. Yeah, it has been a blast and you guys seem to be enjoying it. Yeah. yeah and um, so... Yeah, it's yeah. been good. Good time. So um, let's see, I guess we're collecting <laughs> ourselves a little bit. We're a little disorganized, maybe. We're, there is a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot on. going on. Yeah, and uh, we're maybe don't have quite as much strategy going into these uh, right now as we would like to. Yeah. But uh, we'll get back to that. And we've got a, a fun day today. We don't have a specific topic. Instead, we are going to do your questions. Yeah. And we're just going to take a whole episode and run through subscriber questions. We've got just a lot of neat questions. We can't ever get to all of them. And we thought, hey, this is actually helpful to us once in a while to throw something in like this. We don't have as much prep time and we can get to things that we're not normally answering or talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, absolutely. So that should be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, hey, we are sitting under a nice big tree in the corner of the garden. So if you guys are hearing that, you're listening to the wind in the trees right above us. It's a lovely sound. And you know what? One of you, I don't have it up in front of me, commented about loving the different scenery and even the weather. So thank you. We appreciate that <laughs> feedback because sometimes we feel like, wow, it's windy, it's noisy, it's rainy. Um, but we're trying to get out here, get in different places on the property yeah. and give you a different view, different topics and that the weather just comes with it because hardly ever is it just still and perfect. Right. And one of right these here. days we'll get to microphones. We keep talking about that, but get, this, the, get the sound worked out. This but is doable. This is and working. it's just, it's homestead ethic. You got to make it doable. Yeah. You, you, you got to be able to accomplish something there and, and not get hung exactly. up because you don't have everything just right. Yeah. So we're sitting in the back corner of the garden now and you can see right behind us, we're kind of in the corn, squash, amaranth, sunflower yeah, and they, area. And they are taking off. They are doing a lot. So good. Very cool. So what's going on with you? Okay. Well, first of all, I got to say, I feel kind of embarrassed because here we are, we have this great herb cold class out how to treat your colds with all herbal stuff and I'm getting feedback almost every day from students that are going through that class mm -hmm. about how great um, the herbal preparations are in there that they create themselves uh, following the directions in the class and how much it's helped them how much they're staying so much healthier not even getting an, a herb or a cold in the first place and I have all these, all of my own great herbal preparations on my shelf, but you know, you have to take them. And I had one of these great mama moments where I took care of everybody else except for myself. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm sick. I have a cold, but I'm getting over it really quickly because I'm finally getting into gear with taking care of myself. But don't do that. Take care of yourself. Take a break. Mama, well, especially. <laughs> and I was going to say, both in your healthy healing at home, your free mm -hmm. training, and I, and I think in the herbal class, you talk about avoiding health problems. Right. And we have a compounded amount of stress right now. Yeah. And, and different things do. happening between running the homestead, breaking new ground, building projects, uh, some other family life events we'll talk about in a second. Just a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. And company. And we have family company yeah. in town, in the house. Mo most of yeah, it really good great. stuff. But that makes it hard to do yeah. the basics, getting good rest, staying hydrated, uh, all those different things that, that help you stay healthy to begin with. Right. And So um, I'm going to go back and watch my own healthy healing at home training. If you haven't watched it, you should check that out. It's a free training. And because in there, I've got the whole way of staying healthy, right? You know, I've got the eight questions you ask yourself to make sure you're staying healthy and uh, taking care of yourself. And I obviously need to get a refresher from my own teaching. Well, well, I don't have those memorized. <laughs> I think I'm going by a lot of them and just about uh -huh. everybody here has been sick and I haven't. So yeah. it, it works. It works. And, You're doing a good and job. it caught you this time. Uh -huh. And yeah, you probably better get some of your own concoctions out there, but it, it does work. It's keeping me I'm going to take a dose of my own medicine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> take a dose of your own medicine, why don't you? <laughs> So anyways, that that's uh, my side note of just, you know, taking care of ourselves. But but, I but being been, sick isn't slowing you down much. So what else is going I, on? Yeah, I don't really have the chance right now to slow down, which is one of the problems, right? Well, of course, I'm working on the canning class. This has been like a canning marathon. I don't think I've ever canned something so many days straight as I have in filming this class. But we're now well into the pressure canning section of the class. Um, in the filming, wow. I still have a lot mm -hmm. of editing to do. 
and it's it's fun I right now in the kitchen the Boston baked beans for the class Ooh. they're baking in the oven and then they're gonna get canned and um, it smells so incredibly good. It does, good. yeah. I, I'm gonna have to fight off everybody so that we don't end up eating those for dinner instead of putting them in the canning class, so. Ooh, those would go good with the go good with the burgers, burgers this yeah. evening. But be, uh, no, you don't uh, get them yet. I, I have I'm, to can them. I'm, I'm, I gotta give them I'm to getting them it. I'm out of here, I'm going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna stay locked in the oven until they go if, if into there, the If there's job. no uh, Boston baked bean canning portion of the class, you'll know why i'll know yeah it's you'll my, know who to blame. <laughs> yeah. but besides that i've been taking care of our peas our peas in the garden are just yep. going crazy we have snow peas we have shelling peas and we have um the english snap peas and they're all great and they're all coming ripe at the same time so we're doing all sorts of good stuff with peas and I gotta say, the snap peas are my absolute favorite. They are so sweet and so good. Oh, they're wonderful. So. And this is definitely the most peas we've ever grown. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever grown this far. Yeah. 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 So it's gonna be exciting to have some some peas in the pantry. Yeah, absolutely. That's a song, isn't it? Peas, peas in the peas, pantry. Peas in the pantry. <laughs> Should be. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear uh, somebody write that one for yeah, us. That'd be a good. One. Okay, what about you? What are you up to? Oh, well, I guess to get. Uh, the hard things off the chest we try to keep it pretty light and and positive here mm -hmm. um but life happens and and uh it's, it's been a hard week my brother passed away this week yeah. and um uh so that's that's been tough yeah. and um don't really want to talk about it a whole lot here mm -hmm. but um that is reality so a lot of our family is hurting and missing him and of course i'll have to travel here to go uh, to services and be with family a little bit because um, he's not he's not here local wasn't here local um, so that's been hard yeah and um, and tiring but uh, so that's been on my heart a lot and we're going through that and otherwise just plugging away and mm -hmm. uh, building chicken tractors has been the main objective uh, some other projects got me detoured and so I'm behind on that but we've got uh, two almost done we need three but they're still small so we can fit them in two. We can get them. A... Yeah, and and um we will show you those guys. We will show you guys those chicken tractors. I've got my own take on them. Yeah, and they uh, are really nice. I'm sitting it the, next uh, to one. I can yeah. see it right here. Calling them the really... Idaho A-frame. Idaho A-frame. Chicken like tractor. <laughs> and uh, we'll give you some sort of tour on that soon. But uh, working away on that, our water system. I think you guys saw a short little clip of the water cistern going in right mm -hmm. there, right around Fourth of July. Uh, getting some water security built in and a better system for the property because of adding mom and dad's place and some different irrigation water to the barn different things we need so right um man that's going on the house project mm -hmm. uh gardening always gardening. oh yeah always, always gardening <laughs> yeah always gardening you guys are gonna hear that every day you're always gardening uh, i spend about an hour and a half hour to an hour and a half in the garden every morning yeah yeah that's my quiet time and i love it it's a nice time to be in yeah, the garden it is. still not too hot yep. yeah so Good. that's yeah that's about it but it's everything's cranking away right yeah so, and, and we've got family, as Carolyn said. So yeah. we got out on the lake yesterday and last night, took a little break, and uh, kids had a blast yeah. getting out on some rafts in the water and just kind of plunked them out in the middle of the lake and let them float that, around. Yeah, and that was fun. Carolyn and I got out for a kayak. That was super fun. That we, was really we, neat. I think that's the first time we've kayaked together since our honeymoon. Really? Yeah. Oh wow! Well, it was yeah. fun. We should do it. It more was. Often. Well, we that are. Was a lot of yeah, fun. yeah. We're gonna get. Yeah. We're gonna get a few more kayaks and that start would doing be fun. that. So that was a blast. And hey. Thanks all of you in advance that, for your happy anniversary wishes. There were a whole lot here. I don't know that you've gotten to read through and all. I haven't read feed, them all, but tons of happy anniversary. Oh, that's uh, nice. Thank best you wishes. Guys. So thanks very much. That's awesome. We and, uh, we had a nice time, but we didn't really have time to do a lot because of all the company coming in and out. So we have a trip for just us planned. Mom and Dad offered to hold, hold down the fort the homestead. for two nights. I think we get two nights. Oh, wow. So that is really, right. really exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. So we have up. that coming up. That'll yeah. be fun. <laughs> yep. So, okay. So that's it with us. And so we're going to get on to you today and we're going to call you out. We hope that's all right. And we're just going to run through uh, the questions on the last pantry chat and if we have time we'll, we'll go back even a little bit further mm -hmm. and just uh, answer some of the questions and comments right so you're gonna have to give me just a second 
Um, one comment we got quite a few of. This one's from D Harper. Never ever be worried about showing affection for one of another. For one another. Aww, Most of us enjoy nice. seeing that. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. That's Thank cool. And we, we hope it's an encouragement. Um, <laughs> life's tough sometimes we all work hard there's a lot of issues but it's so important to love one another yeah and uh have, have somebody whether it's your wife or a good friend somebody to go through life with and share everything mm. with and, and just experience that unconditional love yeah and so we're, we're blessed we are yep. yeah <laughs> uh let's see here uh okay so i'm gonna handle a few general ones because there's ones that we get consistently and one okay. in this feed and that is about because this this last week's uh, pantry chat was on homestead dairy. Oh, okay. And That's right. the requests for videos on kefir, cheese, dairy classes, mm -hmm. all of that. And of course, there are a few videos out there. Yep, free. there's a few of them. We will probably do some more free. Uh -huh. And we hear you. We've had people asking for about two years for a dairy class. That is in the project bucket, <laughs> but it's going to take a while to get to. So we do hear you. And um, we will hopefully maybe this fall somewhere get something in, maybe a how-to on dairy. I would imagine there's and, something um, in the season, yeah. Yeah, and um, and the thought of a class is definitely on the list, but it's not going to happen right now. Now, I got to tell you guys, if you're watching on Facebook, because these videos go up on Facebook and use YouTube, it's really hard to go back and find old videos on Facebook. Yeah. YouTube, it's a lot easier. You can go back and scroll back. And I think we have at least three, maybe four videos on homemade dairy stuff yeah. out that you can find a lot easier on YouTube. So yeah. go search us over there. Yeah. And so we hear you and we will yeah. keep those in the mix. There's just a lot to do. And um, so that's why we are doing these pantry chats. One of the reasons, mm -hmm. some, somebody else commented how it would be um, nice to see more of the how-to. More of the how-to. And we yeah. get that, we're trying to break it up. So we're trying to do pantry chats once a week and we're trying to do how-to or, or some sort of informational that's more visual once a week. And mm -hmm. um, there's just a lot to cover. Yeah. It, it takes up years. So um, we will continue putting those out and figuring out what's the best thing to do in season and that helps you guys mm -hmm. out. But the pantry chats are another angle of talking about these topics so that we can get some of the information right. out there um, without the production requirements of a how-to video yeah. and, and organizing. And it would be the, so nice to be able to overlay photos. I know a lot of people have said it'd be nice to see photos of what you're talking about when you're talking about it, but it just adds hours of editing work to the video that we just can't do at the moment. It, it does, and we're, so. we're we're working on it, and, and hopefully we're gonna at least get some of that in. I'm right. working on figuring that out into the time of, okay. of editing these pantry chats so that we can get a little more visual into mm -hmm. them, um, though they're still not gonna be a how-to. Right. So as we go along, we're growing, we're developing it, mm -hmm. and, and we hope to do better at, at getting you guys different information that's helpful to you. Um, okay, here's another one by Petty, pa Penny West Hagen. Penny said, uh, how about uh, a tour of the property? The scenic backdrop in this vlog was gorgeous. Ooh. Yeah, and that's another one we've been getting a lot of requests for since we moved in, a property tour. And we will do that, but we want to do a good one. We want to get some <laughs> um, drone footage. We, we want to make that pretty cool. <laughs> and I, I've got some ideas yeah. for it. So this summer, we will do a tour, um, but it's going to be a little ways out. And, and we want to do a good tour. Um, and it's going to take a little bit to do. That sounds like fun. Yeah. It'll be a good one. Yeah, okay. it, it will. So we... Uh, Penny, we'll get to that, you guys. There's a lot of people asking. Um, let's see here. Moving through. Please demo the ch cheater chatter. Uh, that's a ways out. Um, sorry, there's a bunch of questions in here, but there's a lot of comments. Well, I can tell you one. Okay. Oh, sorry. oh you got one? I just hit one. Okay. Okay. What kitchen tools can you not live without? Do or die kitchen tools. Uh, okay, well, a good knife and a good cutting board, of course. And, uh, and but I'm sorry. I know that that's... Christy Joel. Christy Joel. Christy, that's a great question. What can I, okay, good spatulas and a good heavy duty wooden spoon. You can do just about anything with a wooden spoon. And at least one except, cast iron. Oh, yeah. of course a cast iron. At least one. No. <laughs> Essentially right, like least 50? five. <laughs> You're as bad as me with trailers. I know. I, if we go traveling, I take cast iron pans, seriously, because I don't want to cook in somebody else's nonstick scratch <laughs> something or other. So, um, okay. so, okay, good knife, good, knife. good cutting board, um, wooden spoon. Did you say a spatula? Spatula. With cast iron? Of course, the cast iron. 
I, I'm wow. I feel I guess on the spot with this because I know there's things that I just love. You're gonna be on the spot today. I'm, I'm gonna be on the spot. We have okay, not. We have not pre-read all these. I better drink the rest these. of my coffee. So um, <laughs> let's see. You know, I can do a lot with just those things. A majority of things. I, I you know, my hands is gonna be what I'm gonna say. And I drive some people crazy on my videos and people are always commenting because I get my hands into what I'm cooking. And if I were on the Food Network, that would be a big no-no, but I'm sorry, you're in my kitchen, so. <laughs> this is, this is real, it. this is real, real life, yeah. it's family. This isn't right. a restaurant. And there, yeah. there's certain protocol for different places yeah. that you'd certainly observe, but this is, it's real life. Right. Yeah, and hands get in the food and kids are involved and stuff is messy sometimes. And yeah. this isn't a sanitary um, LA kitchen, sorry. <laughs> it's a farm kitchen. <laughs> it's a farm kitchen, absolutely. It's the way it goes. Mason jars. I don't think I could survive without mason jars in the kitchen. I use them for everything. We do not own Tupperware. I don't have any Tupperware. Um, I use mason jars, all different sizes, for just about everything that most people would use a, some sort of a Tupperware thing for. Um, so I, I'm sure, you know, now when you get into specific things, um, long handled spoons and big stock pots or other ones that I really use and when I have that great big it's like a 21 inch handle if I remember right um, stainless steel spoon mm. and I just love that thing I use it all the time so I think just the solid basics like that are what's really important to me cool. yeah bread knife a good bread knife yeah you need a few different good knife good, good knives, knives. Yep. yeah okay okay covered it yep all right uh, I want to get through as many as I can so we okay. can uh, really ask people. <laughs> right. That's tough for us. John Parkhurst, when skimming, how much cream do you leave for drinking milk? Uh, okay. Especially for children. Especially for children drinking the milk. Yeah, but so in general, I mean, I, I don't know that we quite approach it that way. Okay, but. so I, I do like to leave some, but what I do is I let my cream sit for at least 24 hours on the milk before I skim it. And then I just pull off the really thick stuff at the top. So as long as you've got that really thick, it'll it'll get thick, mm -hmm. really thick on the top. And that's what I, I take off. So I don't go all the way down to the blue milk or the skim milk. Um, I leave a layer of cream on there, but I try to take off all the really thick, you know, that would be like that heavy whipping cream type right. of texture. Anything lighter than that is considered a coffee cream if you're getting into different cream grades. And so I always leave the coffee cream on the milk. So that's gonna really depend on the particular jar of milk where it came off of your bucket of milk that came into the house, the cow. It's gonna depend on a lot as to how much cream you get. So I can't give you a solid amount answer. But you know, I'd like to leave at least a quarter inch and if I've got a really good cow who's giving me a lot of cream and you know you get a lot of that separate out into the thick cream and then you have a nice layer of the coffee cream I'll leave even more you know up to three quarters of an inch if you've got a lot on there cool and so how is how do how is it how is percent cream measured by volume weight calories do you know the technical answer I know kind of how we when we're talking about how much cream we get we kind of address it by you yeah. know really volume right we're talking volume. you know we're talking volume yeah. I, do, I do, do not you know, the know technical? technically but milk is usually graded in weight right so when it comes in by weight so my guess would be that it was weight but i do not know that but but kind of the farm method when you're looking at like buying a cow or you're looking we we, we look at it, how much cream per gallon do we get are we getting mm -hmm. a quart of cream per gallon a pint of cream um, that, that's really how we look at it is by volume and a, and a right. quart would be good yeah we're, we're real happy with a quart right Per gallon, uh, per yeah, gallon. absolutely. That's, right. That's that, so that that's gallon. how we measure it and look at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Ratio. Okay. Um, I got to keep scrolling for a minute. So. Okay. Um, so somebody asked, and I am sorry, I don't even remember where you asked it, but it was a question that stood out as being somebody said it'd be good for a pantry chat, and it was about dealing with pregnancy, being <coughs> heavily pregnant during harvest season. That is a really good question, and you know. I, I have the answer. Okay. I take all the tomatoes, blend them up, put them in a bag, and stick them in the freezer. <laughs> Literally. Did that okay. one year. That's that's what you do when your wife has morning sickness and she can't stand to look at all the vegetables that comes in from the garden. Oh, it was a... That's what you okay. do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask about the green beans that year. That's going to go down in infamy on my side. Um, that's a fun story that's a <laughs> for me to tell. <laughs> Maybe not for her. I'm blushing already. Okay. So... Um, 
you know, the number one thing goes back to what I was saying about not taking care of myself here with this cold. Take care of yourself. That is more important than the vegetables. And I know we don't like to hear that, but not taking care of your body, not getting off your feet when you're heavy pregnant or when you're, you know, just postpartum can have long, long-term effects on your health. And don't do that. You know, it's worth <laughs> sticking it all in the freezer even if that's not the ideal method or asking a friend to just take it and give you a few jars of something that she cans for you you know if that's your only option um, come up with creative things that keep you off your feet ferment it all that is fast and easy and um, you can ferment a lot and very good in some cases some cases some things get a little sour and they kind of throw the flavor off to what we're used to but uh, most of it's really good. So just the, the big tip here is take care of yourself and if it's a newborn baby, you know, if you've had the baby, um, take care of the baby first and you'll have other years to harvest the garden and to bring in all that produce. So, but enlist help. Ask everybody, please help me. <laughs> yep. That's a good way to do it too. All right, Mary Edmo, what's your favorite book about the home dairy? Milk Cow Kitchen by Mary Jane Butters. And that is a Hands good... Hands down, my and favorite. I, and, and I gotta tell you, because when I saw that book and flipped through it, I was a little skeptical. I was like, oh, it's just a bunch of hype and pretty <laughs> pictures. But I got to reading it, I saw some of the things she was doing, and Mary Jane, if you happen to see this, I'm sorry, but that was my first impression. <laughs> but after studying it, it is, it actually has deep knowledge. It's a very well-produced book. It's a it pretty is. book, it's but it has very, very yes. good knowledge. She knows her stuff. Yeah. And it is actually a fantastic book. Yes. And I would add to that on the dairy cow side is The Family Cow. And I can't remember the author. Do you mm -hmm. remember the author? I don't remember. But it's called The Family Johanna Cow. Johanna something. You, you want an all-around good dairy cow care book, problem solving, how to take care of the dairy cow. Um, it's a little conventional, I think, yeah. for some of our more organic ways. But it's still an excellent, I think it's the best resource out there That's on that side of things. Definitely good, although Milk Cow Kitchen goes very heavily into cow care also. It does that as well. It and does. Very good. It really goes into that. So, um, yeah, she's got, she's like Pinterest worthy on every picture she's ever taken, I think. It's really pretty and maybe a little female centric, like the women will love it. The guys might think it's a little fluffy looking, but it is solid information. And I tried mozzarella recipes from all over the place when I first started making cheese, and that's the only one that worked for me. <laughs> so it's a really good um, how-to also. And that's a, that is a um, short mozzarella? Short mozzarella. That, that's an easy yeah. mozzarella yes, that it makes is. it easy to do mozzarella. Mm -hmm. A yeah. quick, quick mozzarella. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, if you've got one in your head, go ahead. I'm scrolling. I don't. Got a lot of nice, um, we'll come up with one. Um, <laughs> Can I start asking you questions? Can, yeah, Just sure. like random you questions? Can, yeah. <laughs> can you please have a dairy class, Jessica Rashka? Eventually. 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 I, think I know can... you guys want it, so we'll get that on the... Yeah, and I, that, that's solid. Eventually yeah. we will. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to take a break after this canning marathon, though, for the canning class. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, Je another one from Jessica Rashka. What attachment do you use for the mixer for making butter? Now, you use your Bosch. You use a particular attachment? I do. On my Bosch I use the cookie paddles. Cookie paddles. Cookie paddles. If I was using a kitchen aid, I would start with the whisk and I would end with the hook. Or the paddle. You know what? They do have the paddles. I forget that because I never use mine. Um, if you have the paddle, you could use the paddle all the way through. Cool. the kitchen aid. Yeah. yeah. Real good. Okay. Lori McKenzie. What animal livestock breeds do you recommend that would produce the healthiest meats? Wow, that is a very broad question. And, um, you know, I think the broad answer is it's more about how you care for the animal and take care of it than the breeds. Certainly there are different breeds that are gonna do better yeah. in different regions, different sizes, depending on your resources. Um, and that's an extensive topic, but to answer that as far as healthy meat, whether you're raising chickens, mm -hmm. beef, lamb, it's how you raise them and raise them, feeding them and caring for them as close to the environment that they would have as, you know, they were in the wild. Yeah. So they need to be eating some sort of replica or, or the real thing. I mean, we feed chickens grains. Chickens mm -hmm. would be eating, 
you know, seed heads, smaller grains, mm -hmm. bugs, hence why we do chicken tractors and try to get some of those out and we try to free range our chickens. So we want to reproduce that environment and give them access to the natural environment. Right. And in this, it's obviously all controlled on the farm, but um, that, regardless of your breed, is mm -hmm. going to give the healthiest animal. Of course, lots of fresh air, lots of water, right. lots of quality feed, um, whatever you're raising. Well, and you kind of touched on this, but your healthiest meat is going to come from your healthiest animals. Your healthiest animals are going to be what does well in your environment. And, you know, you want to find out what kind of animals would be natural in your environment or what would be you know, what kind of cow would thrive in the environment that you live in? What kind of chicken, what kind of goat? There are different uh, varieties, types of all those animals that do well in different environments. You wouldn't necessarily want to raise a Scottish Highlander cow down in Alabama. No, you know, you, that's you don't. really not going to cause it to be a really healthy animal. Right. It's just the wrong environment for that particular animal. So find out what does well in your region. Absolutely. Good answer. Okay. Uh, Lisa Mosley, would you do a video about kefir was part one. I don't know. Will you do a video about kefir sometime? Okay. <laughs> also, sure. do you ever use your whey for fermented fruit products? I do. I have definitely. I, and you know what I really like doing it with, I did this, um, for the holidays this last year is to take my apple cider that I can during apple season. We take our apples to the press and I can the apple cider and then I add a little whey to it and make my own sparkling cider for the kids for holidays. Nice. And it is delicious. It's really good. Um, but we also do things like the fermented cranberry sauce. You just have to remember whenever you're doing a fruit type ferment that it's going to go very quickly from a lacto ferment to an alcohol ferment. So you want to watch it very closely, get it into the fridge and consume it pretty quickly. That's not gonna be a long-term storage method for fruit, unless you're trying to make alcohol, in which case it's a great long-term storage method. All right. Okay, Shelly Cameron, do you do chicken bone broth and how do you save it for winter use? I can it, yes. And it's gonna be in the canning class. That's actually tomorrow's lesson that I'm filming is bone broth. But that's a great pantry staple, isn't it? Can, oh, can absolutely. Chicken bone broth, isn't that an awesome? Absolutely. It's a great thing to have on hand. And you know, um, going and buying organic boxed, and now they're boxed. I guess you can get them in cans too. Chicken broth. Wow, somebody's making a killing off of that stuff. I mean, it's, an, it's kind of, you know, it's the bones. <laughs> It's the leftover yeah, parts yeah, and water. And so when you get to making it yourself, it's very inexpensive and it's really worthwhile. If you use a lot of broth, super worthwhile to make it yourself and get it on the shelf. But use, make sure your chickens were healthy. Well raised, well yes, raised. You, you don't want to do that with confinement fed chickens. I don't, in my opinion, it's not worth it. Ab yeah. I, I mean, you got to, you can. Absolutely. But, um, <laughs> It's better than confinement raised chickens put in a can and broth, bought and broth in the store. Yeah, it is a step in the right direction. It's a step in the uh, right direction. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, St. Fieker's Farm. Sorry, Cian. Hi, Cian. Don't know if I said that right. How do you say it? I don't know. She goes by Farmhouse Tees. And okay. That's the reason right there. Right. Cause none well, of Cian us from Farmhouse Tees, some friends mm -hmm. of ours. Um, how do you make all that with kefir? Sorry, that must, do you remember what How was do we in the make video? all of that with kefir? Yeah, we we're talking about the cheese and all of the things. I use the kefir oh, as yeah, the okay. master Good. starter Thought with the cheese. Yep. You just stick it in there where it says to use starter. Um, because it has all those bacteria in it, I use about a cup, half a cup of kefir per gallon of milk that I start with when I'm using it as a starter. So if I'm trying to culture um, <laughs> six gallons of milk, I would use three cups of kefir, but that doesn't have to be exact. That's kind of just a rough guide. When you get into the world of biology and good and bad bacteria, you kind of are working with rough guides on things as much as we like to pretend like we're being exact. So, um, so yeah, you just put it in there where it says culture. I even culture my mozzarella. I didn't know that a lot of people didn't culture their mozzarella, but I make a good raw mozzarella. And so I want good bacteria in there. 
so that it helps to preserve it and keep any pathogens from forming in that cheese. When you have those good intentionally cultured bacteria in there, of course they keep bad bacteria from forming. It's part of what they Absolutely. do. And so, um, <coughs> so I even put the kefir into the mozzarella when it's, you know, when it's still in the milk stage. Cool. So, yeah. All right. Okay, Andrea Barham, what all greens do you put in the super greens powder? What all green, whatever I have growing in the garden that we have extra of. So she so, says, I know you said beet greens, yes? Yes. Assuming lettuce? Yes. Kale? Yes. Chard? Yes. I'm starting to just rattle them off. <laughs> now she also says- Radish tops, carrot tops. What about, she's asking mm -hmm. if any of these have nutritional value, which they do, but do you use them? Broccoli? Yes. Leaves, cauliflower leaves, Brussels sprouts? Yes. Pretty much anything. Pretty much all of those green, things, your leafy all of greens. greens. And you're making more use of that plant. You might be growing it for the broccoli heads, right? So I'm trying sprouts. to think, is there a way to come at it to say what you wouldn't use? Um, don't use rhubarb leaves. I know that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But aside from I, I, I mean, pea, that. your pea plants, those leaves are good. You can even put squash leaves in should you have extra, although your squash really need the leaves there. So don't go stripping your squash plants. but. Um, you can put all sorts of things in there. And then of course all your foraged greens, your dandelions, your plantains are great, your mallows, all those things are incredible for getting into a super greens powder. Cool. So, good. That gets us through winter too. Uh -huh. Love, Love getting my greens in the winter time. Yes. Okay, Katie Carnahan. This is a kind of a couple questions here. Let me see if I can wrap this into a little bit of simplicity. Um, what do you use for personal products? Deodorant, shampoo, soap, toothpaste, house cleaners, bug spray, and sunscreen, especially bug spray and sunscreen because it's summer here. Um, do you guys even have mosquitoes in Idaho? <laughs> we do have we mosquitoes do. in Idaho. Maybe not as bad as some places, but yeah, uh, they, we they, do have they, them. We get plenty here at certain mm -hmm. times. Yeah, but that's a, that's a good topic. Yeah. It is a good topic and in some things in our house we have that worked out pretty well In other things we're still experimenting. In fact, our oldest daughter has just really taken up the banner of wanting to experiment with these things and she's making all sorts of fun stuff right now. So um, we try, whether we're making our own or not, we try to go as organic and natural as possible. So whether we're making them. it, like you make our mm -hmm. soap, or mm -hmm. we make our soap. But a lot like, of times we do shampoos mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah, sometimes toothpaste. We haven't done toothpaste for a while, but, but we have, yeah, have a, a good reason toothpaste. For it, but <laughs> yeah. Well, and kids in tooth powder is really messy. Let me just leave it at that. It was making a yeah. disaster. Yeah. So. Well, and I think it's a good example of how we're all on a journey yeah. and, and we have to do what we can. We have to prioritize, you know, some of us have another natural bent toward a certain mm -hmm. concern or we've had a certain problem. So we're approaching problem solving right. with health and, and cleaning out the toxins in certain areas of mm -hmm. our life. And, you know, food for us has been like the top. We, we have a lot of people to feed, right. a lot of young people. So a, a lot of our environment is is the food source, keeping that pure and clean first. And and with that goes the environment because we're working with the environment so right. hard. And then these other things come in and we do what we can. But just like you guys, there's areas where, yeah, we don't we don't hit it perfectly. So mm -hmm. there's not always the healthiest shampoo or yes. this or that or yeah. those different things. And right. that is a journey. And yeah. so to me, it's excited that our daughter, mm -hmm. exciting that our daughter is now is on to that and is going to be able to, um, she's got a passion for that. And so she's going to be able to help the family by tackling some of those topics. That's really neat to it have is. somebody else jumping in there. So, but to cover a little more specifically, a few things. We don't tend to use sunscreen. We cover up is what we do. If we're getting too much sun, we put some long sleeve clothing on. We make sure we wear hats. So we try to approach the sun that way. Shampoos, when we're doing our own, we use baking soda. Just use baking soda with an apple cider rinse, uh, apple cider vinegar rinse for our hair a lot of times is what we do for that. You're supposed to wash your hair? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you just don't have any, that's uh, all. <laughs> once every six months, you get it wet. Okay, um, so those are, those are some of the top things that you talked about. Deodorant. <laughs> I guess I'm picky, but I have not found a homemade one that I like at all. But what I've got to say about all of them, because I've heard so many people say natural deodorants don't work. You're, the the store-bought non-organic kinds change your body chemistry 
So when you switch to an organic or a natural type of deodorant, you have to give it a few weeks. It takes a while to, for your body to adjust. It just changes the bacteria in your armpits. <laughs> so um, make sure you give it a little bit of time to adjust. And yeah. That's just the one good area that I have not changed. I just haven't been willing to go there. I don't really even know why, but I have what I like. I've had it since I was a teenager. And yeah. it is just a standard store-bought product. And, and for all the things I'm happy to change out, that one hasn't made the list. That one hasn't made the list yet. I guess it's because you said you haven't found any that work. And so you're, you, I'm the guinea pig I, in a I lot of it. things. Yeah. You've been more the guinea pig in this area. Right. And, and you haven't found a product well, or a line. Some of them so. work, but I don't like their application. Like, I'm not, I don't want to spray something. I don't want a powder. I don't want to, you know, Gosh, I just, picky. I'm picky. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> That's my problem on this one. So anyways, if you have one, a great one, somebody else that you love, share it with us. I hope you're not expecting too many straightforward answers. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your shirt? He has this great shirt that says it depends. Because a, that's yeah. the really good answer most it's of the a, time. Well, it's a permaculture. There just is no perfect answer. Most it of the time, it depends on the situation. Absolutely. So, yep. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on, we'll get a couple more here. We're going okay. a little long today, but um, this is fun, and um, so yeah. we'll, we'll get through a few more. Okay. Uh, Connor Phelps, curious about your kefir starter. I get that you continue your kefir day to day, but what did you use to start it? Are grains usually shared? Mm. Um, would you recommend buying a starter grain and then continuing after that? So, um, I, yeah, I think he's looking for a little help on just how kefir works. So, I would really recommend, unless you have a friend who really knows what they're doing with kefir, I would recommend buying a good kefir starter. Once you buy it once, you know, it costs you 10 bucks, 12 bucks, you can keep it forever. But if um how do you say that nicely if people don't know what they're doing with your keeper you can end up with a really weak keeper grain um if you have somebody who's just had great success with keeper definitely ask them if you can get some of their grains and you just divide it off and then you can share your grains when you get extra because you'll have to do something with them um, one trick that i have found to always do with any culture that you are keeping yourself is the first time you have to divide it off. The first time you have too much of a kombucha scoby or a kefir, uh, you know, dry it or freeze it or do whatever you have to do to give yourself a backup in your freezer, mm. in your pantry, whatever. <coughs> I just, I have killed so many kefir grains. <laughs> I've had to get kefir so many different times because I just managed to kill them. Now this last batch has been going for, I don't know, three years, four years or something, but I have a tendency to accidentally dump the wrong jar into something or cook something or I don't I've done it so many times it's not even funny but it is kind of <laughs> so yes so short answer probably the best just buy it the first time and then keep it going okay Leland Barker and I think this is an actual question not a, not a rhetorical comment but he says I have one single small kefir grain about the size of a small marble mm -hmm. which is small mm -hmm. and it will culture an entire quart of raw milk in less than 24 hours is that crazy well if you have a nice warm kitchen and you have good milk then I don't think that's very crazy but it, that's some healthy kefir grains. it's a healthy kefir grain it's well started hopefully it's it's multiplying for you and you end up with more grains than that so you can give them away and share them with some of us who it, it should want be healthy. growing I think it would be crazy if it wasn't growing that well if you're getting thick and kefir, kefir every and time then you know you're getting it, it should, kefir but it but it I mean the grains, growing. the grains should be, if mm -hmm. it's staying that size, I, I don't know what that would mean, but that would seem a little odd. Some of it has to do with the um, temperatures too. It really, that makes right. a big difference. Yeah, warmth is going to, warmth is going to accelerate gonna that. It's going to culture rapidly. a lot faster. I've done a little kefir. You have. Much. He's much I, more I, exacting I, of a person. So when he does something, he tends to do it really well. And I'm kind of like the, just dump a little bit in there. You know, you guys have seen me cook in the kitchen and I'm like, I don't know, a little bit of salt and... Everybody says, well, way too much salt. <laughs> but, you know, me. he's, he's very exact and, and that's good. So you do a good job at things. <laughs> when I get them done. When you get them done. Okay. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Martha Lucia, what's the difference between kefir and clabbered milk? 
ask me. Ah, that's a great question. A clabber milk is usually using your wild yeasts and bacteria that are in the air or that are in the milk itself, usually a combination of both. A kefir is a specific starter strain. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between a fermented product and a cultured product. A cultured product is specifically cultured with a single or multiple specific um, strains of a bacteria and yeast. Um, whereas a fermented product generally, these, this is kind of a generalized definition, generally refers to something that has many and is being caught from the environment. So that's the difference between those two. Cool. Here's a good uh, book request that I think um, there's probably two that we have um, that's people worth people knowing. Okay. And this is by Drop. Hey, Drop. Um, do you have any book suggestions for making butter, cheese, and so forth, dairy products mm -hmm. that you like? Oh, and yeah. Of course. We just said Milk Mary Jane's. Kitchen. What's the, what's the one you would? But we have one more. Yeah, and um, it's the home, it's the, is it the art of, of cheese making? That was a really good oh, book. We haven't yeah. had that out in a while, but that really impacted oh. us because before we had Mary Jane's book, we had that, and that really impacted yes. us in getting cheese making going. It's that, a natural that, that, cheese making, yeah. Na oh, I don't know sorry, the name I of that offhand. Name. I'm sorry, but that's a really good one. Maybe we'll, 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 we'll try to get in that in the description if yeah. we can, yeah. If, it's because we really got going on that with cheese uh -huh. making. That was a huge help to us. We wanted a source for learning natural cheese making, not the factory method. Most right. recipes you get are based on factory yes. protocol. Right. And and this was more how they made it on the farm or, or yes. in the artisanal in, in, in old world cheese, which is yeah. what we wanted. And, and it's natural cheese making, I don't think it's made easy, but anyways, we'll yeah. try to find that for you. Really, really good cheese book besides uh, Mary Jane's. Yeah, I can't even pull the name out, but it's, yeah. it's a really good one, you're right. Okay, we're starting to wind down and I don't want okay. to get too long here. So, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. we'll try to find one more. Can, okay. Between Friends, we've got some interesting names today. So somebody, Between Friends asks, can you tell me the difference in using a Bosch versus a KitchenAid? So I guess, I mean, do you think we're talking about dairy in, in particular because this well, is I, I, on the dairy video? I guess, but really your your okay. reason for using a Bosch more has more to do with bread making in my understanding because you use the KitchenAid. Well, I got the Bosch but... for bread making, but now I use it almost exclusively. I have the okay. KitchenAid and I so... use it for its attachments, honestly, <laughs> more than I use it for the mixer itself. So a Bosch is a oh i'm gonna i'm gonna mess up this terminology but the motor is in the base instead of like the kitchen aid as a stand mixer the the motor is in the top what that means is the bosch is about 10 times lighter than the kitchen aid because they don't have to counterweight it which is what's going on in the uh, kitchen aid they have to make that base really heavy so that it doesn't tip over because that motor's in the top so i really like that but it is much more powerful and um, it it can hold a much higher volume while still handling the small volumes more efficiently if that makes sense so in the Bosch when it comes to making bread I can make six loaves at a time whereas even my my you know really high quality KitchenAid the six quart KitchenAid can make about two and even that i may i feel like i'm really stressing out the motor to do that and in fact i broke two of them making bread before i got the bosch um and they were the professional ones so it's a little heavier the, duty. yeah the little bosch better. is just a little, little heavier better. duty and it's known you know people who have been using them hard for 15 plus years um they're still going strong ours are my bosch is going on 12 years now i think and it's not and, and our, had and our, a single and it's, problem. And its workload has only increased every single yeah, year. So getting, as it gets it older, harder. it's getting worked harder and harder. We're still on the yeah. increase as far as needed production to provide right. for our family. Right. So, so it just is a real workhorse. So I really yeah. like it. And it's light, so it's easy. But it's not nearly as pretty as a KitchenAid. So I stick it in the cabinet back in the pantry when I'm not using it. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we are going to end it with a transition okay. uh, to gardening because next week's, next time's uh, Pantry Chat is going to be a gardening, gardening Pantry Chat. Pantry. So we're going to well, end with a gardening question. Okay. And we need to wrap up because we're coming on 45 minutes. Oh, wow, a long one. Okay. Um, so thanks for hanging with us if you're still yeah. here. Hopefully this is getting some good information. Um, but 
Karen Wood asks, our daughter bought compost from a reliable supplier we have used for years with great success, but in this batch, seeds will not sprout well, transplanted starts die, or the green leaves turn yellow. Ooh, uh, the kitchen good. garden is great since it had different compost except for the spot their daughter planted her garden with some of the suspect compost. Well, uh, I happen to know that Karen Wood is local yeah. to us, and I happen to know where they got their compost. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure. And um, I'm going to tell you that it was it's probably still hot. It's probably still too hot. I uh, have had this exact same thing happen, and um, I don't want to throw out anything there as far as who, but um, you can get compost that's hot, and it can be very, very good quality. We have an excellent supplier up here. They have uh, some of the best compost for a commercial organic compost I've ever seen, and but occasionally it's hot. And yeah. I've burnt corn, I've burnt a lot of things, not temperature checking it first. So I'd guess you're fine. That's going to turn into great compost. Um, you do, you know, certainly want to be careful because if it's not heat, then it's not good compost. It's got a problem. But I, I really doubt that's the case. Um, it was probably hot and even applied thinly. If it's too hot, it's going to burn your seeds and your starts for sure. And it'll either kill them or they're going to wither yellow or have a problem. So that's my guess. And you'll probably be fine. What I do now when I buy compost is I take the temperature and I check it. And I've bought compost that was is supposed to be finished and it's still 140, 150 degrees. Ooh, that's hot. Good okay. combos, but I got to let it sit. So you gotta let it sit. you're probably fine. Can't tell you without seeing it, but you are probably just fine. Okay, so it's already on the garden mm -hmm. and it's killing things on the garden. So... Pretty much, it's just wait till next year at this point, uh, or later in the season. You can, uh -huh. you can, you know, you, gosh, there's a whole bunch of stuff we can still plant up here. You can still yeah. be planting beets, some of your root crops, certainly greens, which is next week's video is going to be greens. all about greens and how to use them, extend your season, increase your preserve harvest, them, preserve them. them. <laughs> um, they're just uh, have turned out to be a great mainstay for us throughout yeah. the different um, seasons of planting and harvesting. Greens are something that, that can extend your season and are just very, very powerful for keeping fresh food coming right. in the kitchen. So that's next week's subject. And I would that say- That was a really good transition. That was like smooth. Cool. Nice. <laughs> I get it right sometimes. <laughs> that's um, great. So Karen, I, I would say you're probably fine. Let it sit and you know what? Try some lettuce seeds in it. You know, try them in a week. See what happens. Try them in two weeks. You're, you're, it doesn't cost much, mm -hmm. and you, you just just keep testing just keep it once it. a week planting. And I bet you somewhere in here, it's just it just needs to finish off a little bit, and you'll probably be fine. Okay. All righty. All right. Okay, you guys. Great hanging with you today. Hope let us know if you enjoyed this. If this format, we were thinking this might be a cool thing to do every so often. Yeah. Is just answer questions. Go go through the questions that we can't get to regularly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so give us a thumbs up or yeah, that's cool. We'd like more of that once yeah. in a while or whatever. That that would be helpful to know. Yeah. And um, good hanging with you. Yeah. Don't forget to like, share, <laughs> and subscribe. And we will. And don't forget to take care of yourself, even though it's busy, like yes. me. Slow down. Take a break. Enjoy life. Rest. Yeah. Go for a kayak water. ride every so often. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye, guys. Okay. See ya.